Hmm. Something upon which to rest you. Haha, <laughs> there we go. So, like I said, we're gonna wait on a few people to get here, Dean. Like I said, I have Matthew's Super Crambit. Rest to what? Show up. The rest of the people. So like I said, it's no secret that I'm not a fan of Emerson Knives. And this video is not just me busting on Emerson Knives. This is, this is a, I'm trying to do an honest, you know, thing that I think you guys should know. I got all sweaty. You've been waiting for this. What, for the, for the showdown between this and this? So. Let me, let me think about this. This, this isn't something I've put any thought into. This was a just spur of the moment thing. I mean, I've put thought into it. So, it's no secret that I'm not a fan of Emerson Knives. And this is, he has some good designs, but they're fit and finish and poorly executed. And this, by the time you get this tight enough that it doesn't have blade play, actually it's still got blade play. And there's, versus, I mean, it's a short blade, not very heavy. So I am going to get this camera and everything. There's eight of us here, so we can talk about this. Emerson Knives, yes, I do know that Emerson has a significant background in martial arts. I, I have a background in martial arts as well. I know that he trains all the time. I do not. And I know that he has made and designed stuff for operators and stuff like that. I'm not at all design, denying that he has designed knives for like seals and thing like that. And so, am I lagging at all? Is this laggy? Because it looks like it's laggy to me. So, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I feel, I almost feel bad doing it, but the fact is like, I can't justify the, the price difference. And so, just to give you guys right up front, I'm gonna tell you, I looked it up in the intern between the start of the first live feed and and this or the end of the la first live feed and now this one is 289 dollars to about 300 depending on the website the cheapest i saw it was 287 289 and it was they weren't the one that i saw that was 287 was not the same as this it was a little bit different this is 253 dollars and granted that's on sale all eight hq which is where I looked for this. It's the only place I really saw this. I didn't see like a bunch of stuff. I wasn't trying to take forever to figure it out. This is $253, $259. There's a couple different models and they're different prices. So, blade on this one, 154 CM, which is not a bullshit steel, but it's also not top of the line steel like it used to be. This, S35VN steel which is in my opinion a better steel if heat treated properly which we does a better steel than s35vn handles g10 on titanium actually i think they're steel liners I, they might be titanium i can't remember we ceramic coated these for matthews i think they're titanium scales or titanium liners this one double detent on bearings but the detent on it fucking still even cranked down tight does not hold. Detent. All titanium. Bearings. Frame lock. One piece solid ring and backspacer. On bearings with a flipper deployment as well as a wave feature that does, you guys saw me do it, it comes out of your pocket crazy fast. You see where I'm going to start having problems? You see this? The construction and design that they do on these, me, I want it that, that. I want it like that. I gotta put something underneath that 
a second, guys. This is this is not optimal. This is this is a true live feed. This is a, a true Emler. Let's see. Not, that's not gonna work. It's an earthquake. Let's see. Put this under it. That did it. So, well, I'm gonna tell you, like, okay, so we're just, right now, we're just simply talking about um, materials, right? So, pocket clip on this. No real hot spot, comes up. This pocket clip comes way up, real long, and it, it is, it's not comfortable in hand it's not comfortable this is really thick got a lot of sharp edges the checkering on the g10 comes all the way down to that edge tears up pockets things like that but the one that the big one for as big as that hole looks it's uncomfortable and tight it's too wide and it's got that gap in it which makes it uncomfortable this one solid all the way through not uncomfortable too wide one of the things about a karambit is that's a striking implement. Not only can you cut, you can strike. That's one of the things that they've got going for them. You got your hand in it like this. You can, you can pummel somebody. I got news for you. I'm not going to do what I just did with that because I will break my fucking finger. It feels uncomfortable now and to hit anything, holy crap, guys, it's going to hurt. But when you really start looking at it, where this is leaps and bounds above, look at the fit and finish on this. It's all chamfered, it's all smooth, it's got grip because, here, I'll show you, we'll pull this up and we'll look at them from above. Look at the fit and finish on this knife. And it's more attractive now because Matthew and I ceramic coated those. Blade shape, oh, it's the other thing. This blade does not have the piercing point I would want for a self-defense tool. If I have to, if I've got it in hand and I go like that, it's really flat. It's really flat on the end and it's a chisel grind and it's a really thick chisel grind. Wee knives, nice piercing point, nice grind all the way down to a maintainable edge. But like I said, You've got grip, you got checkering, but it doesn't come up and it's not sharp. There's no hot spots. Everything has been filleted and chamfered good. Your pocket clip, I'm not a fan of, I'm, I'm more of a fan of a bent spring pocket clip, a bent clip. This disappears in your hand. You don't even know it's there. Bent clip, but not done real well, really wide, and it stands up pretty proud. It gets in your hand and it bothers you. It's not comfortable in either grip. And then, just the construction on it, it's, and I get it, it's something that they said that is designed to be in the field and, and your average guy can just take it apart with, with a fucking multi-tool and clean it up. The fact is, though, I wouldn't carry this and depend on it because I got news for you, deployment on this, that's the next thing we're gonna do. Deployment on this is, I'm gonna flip you back around. Okay. Back around. Let's see if I can get in. Maybe you guys can see it. So uh, it's gonna be hard to do. Let's bring you further forward. It's that's not who is this? Live view live chat. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm just saying that this is this is the this is the comparison between the two. And if anybody's upset because I'm bad and bad mouthing an Emerson, then you're on the wrong channel, I'm sorry. I, I hate Emerson's. Let's get this stood up so you can see. Let's look at deployment on this. Okay, so this knife, put it in your pocket, grab your ring, and it's out. But if I happen to have it in my hand, I need to open it, I don't have to fuck around. Put this in your pocket. Let's see if I can even get it to do it. This, oh, Matt's left-handed. So, look at that. So out of my pocket, same way I did with the other one. I can get it, but you really have to, let's see. It'll, but it snaps open. But the thing is, it really is uncomfortible to deploy it. It, it, because you get your, 
the thing, your finger, you see that? Your finger doesn't go all the way in and it hurts. That's uncomfortable. And it, any little thing that detracts from your deployment, I think is, if that's what you're looking for, if that's the selling point of that knife, anything that's detracting from that deployment, and then that's the only, like if you were to do it like this, you gotta thumb it open because there's no flipper tab. And even with that, I do have big hands. But what I'm saying is, what if you're carrying that knife with gloves? What if you're carrying that knife with gloves? Are you gonna be able to get through it? No, absolutely not. A lot of guys wear gloves. This, I can get in there. Look how much room, even with my big hands, look how much room is still left in there for that, you know? it. There's a lot of room in there and it's not as wide, it doesn't hurt. And I do have plenty of guns. I got more guns than there are people in the house to carry them. So basically what I'm just saying is, so regular price for this knife, regular price, it's not on sale. I sold it on Blade HQ for, I think, like I said, 287. But that was marked down from like three or 350. Yeah, we wear bigger gloves. Big gloves, big, big shoes, big gloves. That's it. For the price you're paying for that, you get a well, much more well executed tool. And the deployment on this, way better than that. So, I mean, I, I get it, but the thing is, like somebody else said, you know what I see when I see this? The only difference between this and an M Tech is the fact that says Emerson on it. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say something that would kind of be out of character with me. You're gonna have to come with me, I gotta check it. I got stuff in a tumbler, I need to check and make sure I'm not fucking it up. Um, I don't do acid wash. I do something close. I do something close. It's it's my worker finish. Uh, I can show you on one of my knives, but I'm gonna say something that's out of character for me. And having seen enough of them come in, the Emerson clones <laughs> come out of China are better than the actual Emersons. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you guys know I don't follow that stuff. I mean, until something comes in. So somebody was asking about acid wash. Now we, we've covered the main body of it. We know I don't like Emerson and, and we've already established, in my opinion, that the karambit that we makes is a way better karambit. So let's go ahead and I will show you the finish that I can do that is close to like that kind of looks like acid wash hang on i'll show you why is everything so cloudy looking on my camera let's go out here so it it looks like this it's just a blast and tumble this one has been used a lot i think i got a better example of it in here the light in here might be better is, yeah here this is probably a better example of it so it's, it's kind of a, let's find a spot here where we can get the best possible look at it. So you can see it's, um, it's kind of a, it kind of looks like an acid wash. It's more of a, a metal gray, a gun metal gray. And then it does not show scratches. So when it gets, when you do this one, when you do the finish, you can see this knife gets carried. It's got a lot of snail trails snail trails on the blade, you don't see the scratches because they're kind of already there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Oh, I know what that is. That's not a cloudy. I'm sorry. I apologize. So there's a line. I, I never noticed that before. There's a line where I can see how many people are in and thumbs up and all that stuff. And it, it's, it puts a gray on it. So I apologize. I'm just a dummy sometimes. So... But let's show more of my case. Um, okay, well, there you go. There's my case. All right. Oh, you want to see the knives in it? All right. There's nothing really special in it. I mean, I've got my... Enta or my Mordax in my pocket. So top row, all fair and forge. We've got my, um, we have my uh, Fortis, Fortis B, 
Fortis A. I don't remember. Anyway, my Archbishop, one off. My Gavco Colab uh, Mako. My NTAC. Uh, let's hear. You already got, saw it. My, my Mordax with the. I call it a matte finish. It just needs clean. That's my. Master Blaster, I was thinking about redoing the blade, but then I'd have to resharpen it, and I really don't want to do that. My Master Blaster, Maker's Choice, that Chris, uh, Matt and Nico got for me. My Spinner, Maker's Choice, that I want to redo the blade. I redid the blade once and got some splotches on it. This is the one that looks like a fish. And so you guys know, I don't know if you guys remember me talking about it, every one of those little scales was done by hand with a very, very tiny end mill on a Dremel to make that look like a fish. And then, of course, the Predium that Elliot gave me that I refinished. I have my Sebi that I've done the patinaed copper on. I've got a Wii 601. That they don't even make anymore so the next person that asks you can may as well just not even ask they don't make this knife anymore so i'm not getting rid of that of course always in my case is my my riat horizon d in carbon fiber yep i fixed detent issue on this one it definitely has a detent now. My Microtech DOC that I truly, truly love. I would never part with this. This thing was one of the first production knives that showed me. I did a video. The first video I ever did was about this knife. First YouTube video I ever did. I carried it so much, the skateboard tape, all the grip came off of it, and all that's left is the, plas the, the adhesive backing that's stuck down. Um, my Bob Terzola... CTF that I did the black ceramic on. Super, super smooth knife. Love this thing. I love a knife that has got a thumb stud, or not thumb stud, but a thumb disc and a flipper. So when you have a thumb disc and a flipper, you get so many multiple ways of deployment. You can thumb flip it, you can flip it, flip it, or you can just slowly open it if you choose. Uh, crux that was given to me. My gent that Nico is going to refinish. I gave away my original gent, so I'm going to refinish the blade, and then Nico is going to do um, rattlesnake and do it matte finish on this. It's, it's not that it's not attractive. It just doesn't feel... It, it, it feels slippery, so we're going to do a matte finish. Of course, my buck that I haven't carried for a while, I just I had to stop carrying it. It just got carried too much, like it was pushing other knives out of the case or out of my pocket. So my Microtech, I love this knife. I really love this knife. I was talking to the guy that I'm working on his stuff for this morning. I had to call him. I had a couple of questions about the weight balance forward on this. A lot of people don't like the blade shape. I, I don't mind the blade shape. I like that, that forward weight. Uh... I have Matt's Shiro in here. There's a knife that goes in here, but I took it out from Matt's. I got my Spyderco Civilian 2, or not Civilian 2, the Matriarch 2, made, set up for left hand carry. I got my 940. This thing is in my pocket constantly. Because um, uh, I've got it set up for left hand carry as well. Um, we'll get to that one in a second. We have uh, both of my versions of the uh, Cold Steel Triple Action. This is the double blade or double edged one. Took a long time to teach myself how to do that. Uh, let's see what else. This is just stuff that stays in the case pretty much. I've got. I'm gonna make another row for stuff. 
Um, and then the Tonto version of the triple action. It's really, it's really cool. This is a really cool deployment. Um, what else we got? We got my Ontario Rat uh, Model 1, Rat 1. This gets a lot of use, can you tell? It is kind of busted up, gritty, and nasty, and dirty looking. It's because it's got a little bit of rust on it. And then my Microtech that is, I'm having some deployment issues with this. I I used Tough Glide on it the last time I oiled it because I didn't have any rim oil, and now it just does not want to. It, I think it gummed up. It doesn't always want to deploy. Okay, that's everything that's in the case, guys. Yep, nothing else in my pockets except my uh, karambit that we just used for the video. So you've technically seen all the knives that are in my knife case. So. What's everybody got to see? Nathan said, wish the buck came out with a hole in the blade. I, I don't know. I think that would detract from it. I, I don't mind the spidey holes. I don't mind spidey holes, but I think sometimes they're just not as attractive. Some knives look really good with, like my Archbishop. I would not want my Archbishop without the aperture in it so you could finger flip it. Um, that's what I should put in my pocket. I haven't carried my Archie for a while. Hang on, I'll be right back. By far one of the smoothest knives, one of the smoothest Farron Forges I've ever owned is my Archie. But, you know, that knife just would not look the same without it. So... It's, you know, some knives, some knives, it really, it really pops on. Some knives, it just, it doesn't fit the aesthetic. This one, it does. The Mako, it does. Uh, the, um, the Buck doesn't have one, but the Dow, it does. It looks good on the Dow. And some knives just don't look as good with that cut through on them. If I could get one or one or two of Gavco Ferrum Forge, yes, I like. Here's, I like all the Gavco Ferrum Forge collabs. I, I I would never have the Furco, the the first one they called it the Furco. Um, it's it's not one. It's not really available. There's none of them out there. Everybody's already got them. Two. It wasn't the one that I liked as much, but I have the Spinner and the Mako. Love them both because it gives you, you get, you get some of Mike's aesthetic and then you get Elliot's take on it. And it's, I, those are the two I have and I love them. I love them. And I would never, hang on a second. I'll be right back. I've never had a knife make me as happy as this does every time I pull out. Just, just to, just to pull it out and just. I don't carry it all that often, but I do pull out my spinner and just, I, there's just, everything about it is so perfect. And to the, the point where the aesthetic and I don't carry it because I don't want to have to ask Christopher to duplicate the, the two-tone anodizing and stuff he's done on this. I know how hard it was. I've seen him do it. Um, that, that bronze and blue like that. I, I, so this spends a lot of time in a case just strictly because this honestly is a knife I wouldn't want to hurt or damage or do anything to. Because one, I know there's limited parts available to replace anything that I do. Scales and things like that. It's just all of it about it. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. So this spends a lot of time in the case. This is a spinner. So this is the spinner and you can see it almost as a Tonto, but it's a swept edge more akin to a Japanese style and these bro I'm not gonna lie to you Dean these are frighteningly sharp these get ter this is the only one of my gap or my uh Fair and Forge knives that has cut me multiple times and not like oh I nicked myself like oh 
fuck, that probably needs a stitch. Which would I choose, a spinner or a Mako? I mean, that's that's a hard one for me to just tell you. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where the aesthetic, I would, if I was going to have to pick one of the two, I would pick this one. Just because of the aesthetic. It's the most aesthetically pleasing knife that Chris and Elliot have made, in my opinion, as far as the blade profile, the shape, and stuff like that. This, I think, is the most attractive from a standpoint of the lines and the shape and things like that of any of the knives they've made. The flip side is it's it's also really functional. It's got that sweep uh, where you can get a hold, you can come up forward on it. You could get in and do really fine detail work and it is so thinly ground. Nope. It's so thinly ground that when you sharpen it, like I did, it's nightmare inducing how it cuts. Let's see here. This thing cuts at the slightest touch. I mean, just... It's just nightmarish. I didn't like the smock. I didn't like it. Um, so, Phil, Phil D was up here. And uh, when he stopped by, he's, um, he brought his and I didn't like it. I really didn't. It's their button lock flipper, I think, that they did. And it's, don't get me wrong, it's not unattractive. It's just, I didn't like the way it, yeah, I did cut a paper towel. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, here's the thing. It's, uh, we're not going to get into that. Please, let's not do that on here. I'm gonna, I don't want to have to take your comments down and stuff. Uh, I've, I've never gotten to handle a shaman uh, in person. We're, we're not going to get into a, into a political discussion about gays and being gay and stuff like that. That's not what we're going to do here because then it demonetizes things and then I get in trouble with YouTube and comments and complaints. I don't want to have to... Let's Let's abstain from that line of conversation, please. I don't want to have to take people's comments down. Because the thing is, like, if it was just... If it was a... If it was just a, if I was just a YouTuber and I just had a bunch of videos and shit, but this is also tied to my actual business. I just, I got parts in the tumbler. We got to go check on them again. I, I just say it's, there's a lot of people that come on and then they want to say stuff. And then I don't want to, I don't want to have to block people. God damn it. That thing is leaking. Well, I'll give it another, I have to check it in about an, in about an hour or so. I really wanted the Spider Co. Subvert. I don't remember the Subvert. I remember hearing about, it, but I don't remember. Hang on a second, guys. I gotta pause you. I gotta. I gotta. Can you hang out just a second? I have to pause you for just a second. Sorry about that. I had to answer a text from my wife. Mako's knife, but a plain finish. Spinner also has a black coat. Oop, 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 oop. I missed stuff. Um. Mako's nice, but it's a plain finish. Spinner has a black coating with blue hardware. No flipper. Oh, it's a flipperless. Those? Here's, I, I didn't like the idea of removing a flipper on this knife. And then I saw the one that uh, Pip Corona had. It's sexy. It gives it a nice clean line. And as far as finish, Dean, you know you can always send stuff to me. You know I can always find a way to, to make it the way you want. I like doing stuff for you because you're like, bro, this, because then, then you publicize it. There's a lot of people I do stuff for. And I'm like, I never see, there's people I do work for. And then I never see it posted. And I'm like, God, it would be just great if every customer would just share what, what they did. Um, it's green and bronze. So, uh, okay. So I make knives. What business do I have? I make knives and I sharpen knives. And I've, I've done some knife designs and stuff like that. 
So. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Right, you guys got to think. So I want you to think, I am at the forge right now. And I'm usually here at least two, if not three days a week. Sometimes it's just to stop by and pick stuff up because I sharpen all their knives. And sometimes it's because I'm up here and I'm working because I'm refinishing knives for customers right now. Like I just did, like I said, I just refinished. I just refinished this. No, I don't make swords. So anyway, I just refinished this two-tone pocket clip with, so I did some bronze and blue anodizing. So two-tone on this pocket clip and then the backspacer. And I don't forge things. I do stock removal. I take a piece of material and I make it smaller. There's a knife in here, just gotta find it. So. Um, the Mako's, I'm gonna tell you right now. So I love my Mako, blade's a lot thicker. It was a nightmare to get sharp. It fought me the entire time. Uh, so I mean, this one, if you want something that's just going to be ridiculously aggressively sharp out, you know, from jump, the spinner is the one you want. I sharpen all of the Maker's Choice spinners. So that's another thing. We're going to talk about something. Hang on. Caveat emptor, buyer beware. I don't know either one of those. I, I don't follow knife stuff. The only stuff you guys ever see on here is stuff that people send me or my own personal stuff. So not a clue what either one of those are. So, um, type shaped like, don't know, I'm still waiting on Everything for you is ridiculous. I start my torrent. Ooh, yeah, did you cut yourself with it? So we're gonna talk about something. Caveat emptor, I'm gonna give you guys a little warning. There is a knife up and I want you guys to, to, to keep this in mind. So if you go online, if you're looking, there's a guy selling, and I don't, I'm not trying to call him out. I think he just doesn't know different. Um, he put up a knife for sale, and he's got it listed as a Maker's Choice Stinger XL in SM100. There was only ever one of those, and it was, uh, don't know. Like I said, I, I make and sharpen knives and my entire YouTube channel is about knives. I do so much with knives that when I'm done doing knife stuff, I don't fucking look at knives. I play video games and, and I watch goofy shit on YouTube. Like I watch Donut Operator. I watch people get beat the fuck up by the cops because they're stupid and playing stupid games and they won some stupid prizes. So asking me about knives, unless it's something I currently have in hand, like somebody asked me, well, what about this Emerson, this and that? And I was like, yeah, or the uh, the... Oh, it was the uh, ZT. ZT something, 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 something. I was like, yeah, not a fucking clue. I was like, yeah, but you just, you know, knife channel. I was like, I don't, I don't memorize all that stuff because I just don't have room for it. To There's so much other stuff I want to do up here besides trying to remember every number and nomenclature and every maker and stuff like that to the point where... <laughs> um, so anyway, what I was saying is um, there's a guy that's selling... But I want to get this out, the caveat after to just be careful when you're buying stuff. There's a guy that's selling a, uh, a Stinger XL, and he's got it listed as SM100. And I've, I've tried to tell him three times, it's not SM100. You need to change that because you're going to get somebody to buy it, and then they're going to be upset. He goes, no, I ordered an SM100. And I was like, bro, I sharpened that knife. I remember that knife. I sharpened every one of the Maker's Choice, and none of the SM100 blades that have ever left here were ceramic coated. And he's like, well, I was the first person to get in on the pre-order. I was like, that's great. I sharpened every one of those knives. There's only been, since the Stanger run, there's only been about four SM100 knives. One of them was a Stanger XL blade, and it was done custom, and it was sent to a guy, and it's a left-handed, and it was bare titanium, anodized SM100 blade, and that's the only one. And I've sharpened every one of the SM100 blades that Elliot's made since the Stanger run. And so I can tell him, I keep telling him, it was not SM100. It's 20 CV with a ceramic coating. So if you happen to find that post, the guy selling it, listing that as a SM100 uh, Maker's Choice Stanger XL, it's not. It's 100% not. It's 20 CV. And I know this because I sharpened every one of the Maker's Choice from this 
to from here, from this knife was the, no, Master Blaster was the first run I did where I sharpened all of the ma Maker's Choice till now where I sharpen every knife they make in-house. Not just the Maker's Choice, every knife. So you just got, you kind of got to watch. And like, if you guys have any questions about it, don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to message me uh, at my Gmail. So he made one and it did drive him insane. And the thing is, like, everybody's like, oh, this and that, SM100. I have SM100 coming. There is no SM100 available anywhere. I lucked out and got some through a different source uh, by luck. And so there's going to be some SM100 knives coming from me. I just don't know what kind of price range you're going to be in. It's, it's going to be hard to, to price that out and figure out pricing and how much work it is and how hard they are to make and things like that. So I just want you guys to be careful just like with the scales that I was talking about, the aftermarket scales, not everybody out there is on the up and up. And sometimes it's not that they're not on the up and up. Sometimes they just don't know any better. This guy might truly think that he got that knife at an SM100. He didn't. He got it in 20 CV. Trust me, I sharpened it. I would have been much more unhappy if I had had to sharpen one of those in SM100. So... Hopefully he changes it, because I did tell him, I was like, look, bro, I sharpen every one of Elliot's knives and else. Why would you do that? So. Well, the thing is, the material is, and the last time I looked at it, the material is, per ounce, just about the same price as silver. And because it, it's, one, it's, it's hard to make. Two, it's hard to work. Three, it's hard to heat treat. Everything about it is not easy. But the fact is, if you've ever had a knife in SM100 that I sharpened, holy shit, it's fucking frightening. It's terrifying. Because you can actually, SM100 is the only material I know of that you can actually get sharper than a razor. Matthew's here. Hang on a second, guys. I'm going to get some more water. Give me just a second. Everybody, Matthew said hi. So, yeah, SM100 is a very unique material. It, it fucking stays malleable at room temperature, and you can actually, it's the only material that I currently know of that you can actually get sharper than a razor. The only other material I know of is obsidian, because you can get obsidian, the, you can get the apex on that down to like one micron or less, I think half micron. So at any rate, super super thin because it's a it's not steel so the only metal i know of that you can get sharper than a straight razor is sm100 and that's because of its malleability and you can continue to thin out that edge and drag it out when you're stropping that's the key to it is stropping it the right way matthew you've you felt my sm100 is it terrifying yeah it's yeah the sharpest thing I own. uh second sharpest thing you own i don't know you're uh Ferox. That's what you say, but I don't know. It's pretty sharp. Well, pretty much everything I've sharpened for you gets like Matt. I do stuff. I do stuff a little special for Matt because Matt's left-handed, so Matt's so knives get. That, I, I assume you're gonna say you do special things for me because I am special. Well, he's special, like not like special, like I love you, Matt. You're so special, like special, like wears a helmet, doesn't play hockey. It's it's the drugs. <laughs> What's up? Chris Kelly. How are you, sir? Your knife, your not, your knife, knifeuses. There we go. Words are hard, ladies and gentlemen. Words are hard. Knifeuses um, all went out uh, yesterday. Nico and I took them to the post office up here. So we, uh, what's going on? Titanium Todd's here. So Elliot's not here yet. Nah. So, guys, I am going to end this because that was it. That's all I want to do was the comparison between that. I might do another live feed because, like I said, I got a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff. It's just 